This is all snakes in oh, Phoenix area. Ones. This is what they are. Yeah, there's like different rattlesnakes. We just kind of hand these out to people. Oh, poor thing. Well, hopefully he's okay. This isn't a job that always has a perfect answer. We're about to hit a big boom here this week with the uh, spring season finally waking up. Our night temps finally stabilizing after a little bit of a cold front. And with that, it's all starting with me heading to a construction site to the side of me to pick up a snake that's been hanging out on the property for a little while. I don't know what it is, but they called and they have a few people watching it. So go ahead and follow me here and we'll see the scenario that we're dealing with. Another piece of the pristine Sonoran Desert being chopped apart for a house. From an economic standpoint, it's great seeing Phoenix grow, but I do wonder how many more places these uh, snakes can be tucked into before all hell breaks loose. Hey there. It's gonna be the best way for me to around. Gotcha. Thank you. Good sized diamond back. It's been here a while. Go in the bucket. Trust me, it's a it's a much better alternative than hanging around this site any longer. All right. It's a big snake. Beautiful. Nice. Thank you. Is that the only one we're working with here? I assume just the one. Yes. Cool. That was incredibly easy. Got our nice big old diamond back in this bucket. Now I can go bring this thing back out to a much better area of the Sonoran Desert here that's not being built on. I don't know how long this thing would have lasted in this area, just given that on calls like this I can hear comments in the background being made. Yeah, my Spanish is pretty limited, uh, but it's enough to get me around Latin America and I hear comments like Matalo and uh, Nuevos Zapatos, things like that, which is new boots and kill it. So. Uh, Always nice when people choose to make the call. Resource uh, or outsource to an ecological company that actually knows what it's doing and can make a big difference in the long run. You know, sometimes I can pick a release spot in a matter of 10 seconds of looking at a map and then others I'm just staring at a map for 20 minutes. Like, how is this thing even persisting in a environment like this? And this call has kind of been on the latter end of that. It's a lot of interspersed houses and two developments that are going in on both ends. So finding a spot for a diamondback like this that's likely pretty oriented into its home range already, given its age, given its size, uh, is not as easy as I want it to be. That said, I do think I have a spot here and I'm gonna go walk it out and hopefully this guy will do fine going forward. Sometimes you get to a release spot that looks great on maps too and you're excited that you can finally let the snake go and then you get there and it looks like this. Brand new pavement asphalt that they just put in, a bunch of cones lined up. So this is all gonna be blown up here soon. This guy's gonna get a whole new home range, but again, it's a testament to the Sonoran Desert and it's getting teared up. It sucks. Hey everyone, a call for a family nearby me actually that I guess uh, last night there was a rattlesnake in their driveway and there was the neighbors were out there trying to kill it. I guess she caught them trying to kill it and she saved it. She said to stab it and so she has experience with uh, snakes in handling them and so she got it in a bucket and uh, I'm gonna go grab it and relocate it for her. So. Hi there. I hear a rattlesnake. Yeah. Can I take a picture of him when you take him out? 
Sure. When you open it up, because I didn't get to really, I took yeah. it through that. You have a snake hook and everything. Well, remember, I have pythons in there. Oh, cool. Jungle carpet pythons. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, cool. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so you can see it that's it. Yeah, you can see 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 it. Yeah, you said he was bleeding before? A little or? bit by the back of his tail, because the guy who smacked him right here on, yeah. the, on, the, on the rock. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's good. 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 Oh, it looks like he survived getting hit by the stupid shovel. Okay. okay. So you do this for a living or you just do this? <laughs> I do it for work, yeah. 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 You do then, you get called all the time then? All the time, yeah. So is this the time of the year when you see most of them? I just moved you in December. Yeah. This is the first one. My first experience was a rattlesnake. Yeah, so anywhere between February and November, you could probably see them. And you're right here on this edge of this new development so here. So they probably come in through the gates if they end up in the backyard mm -hmm. because there's like gaps all over. The, the drain gate. screens and the gates. That's something we do too. We modify gates and, and drain screens and snake proof yards too. Okay. Um, Can they climb over the, not, the so, walls that they have around the no. compound, you know? Mm -mm. No. no, not those brick walls. So, okay. so as it's long just as it's like under the gate, there's like a big gap. Yeah. The sides of the gate, the bottom of the gate, and, and then those like little drain holes over there. Yep. Yeah. And then the drain blocks. <laughs> yeah. I'll get you some information really quick. Well, I got a cool little booklet for you. One, okay. one second. So we made these. Um, this is all snakes in oh, Phoenix area. Ones, yeah. This is what they are. There's like different rattlesnakes around here, yeah. Yeah, and arrows. gopher snakes and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so rattle is the only poisonous one, venomous one that's around here in Arizona. Here in this place, yeah, we do have the Sonoran coral snake that's here, but they're Ooh. you're not going to really see them here the specifically. Right yeah, you'd be I'd be pretty surprised if you did. My son said that he's seen the king snake someplace. Yeah. Yep. Um, so there's uh, two similar looking. So we ha we do have king snakes. Oh, yeah, look at those. Long nose are pretty similar, but they got some differences. And they would could be around here too. Especially these ones. These ones are around the king snakes for sure, but especially long nose snakes here in this. And those part are of town. not uh, poisonous. So nope. if they want to stay in the backyard, they could stay in the backyard. I don't really care. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> that was fun. She was awesome. <laughs> Uh, everybody, every person that we come in contact is a little bit different and this one was an absolute nature animal wildlife lover. So that, that was pretty awesome. Uh, this is actually a, a, a shameless plug here. We, we just kind of hand these out to people. Uh, Snakes of Phoenix. Brian and I came up with this. Uh, he did the writing. I did the illustration for snakes that can be found out here in the Phoenix area. Something that Jeff and I have been working on for a while is a field guide. And this is not your typical field guide. This is a field guide for people that don't think they would ever need or want a field guide about snakes. This is the Snakes of Arizona. This is like the best book I guess you can get. It has all the information about every one of the snakes in Arizona. Everything about how big it gets, what it looks like, what it can look like, where it lives, what it eats, what it does, how it breeds, all that stuff. All those things that the average person that calls us and is scared of snakes does not care about in any way. These things also are hard to make it so somebody can actually identify a snake. A lot of times you're seeing things like counting the scales on top of the head or um, looking at the scale rows or underneath the cloaca, the, the subcaudals, counting those. Stuff like that are not things that the average homeowner can be expected to do or want to do. So what if we made a field guide, an identification guide that was for just regular homeowners, someone that moved here from Canada now lives in Scottsdale and snakes are a thing they are a part of life and they weren't before. How to tell the difference between a Western Diamondback and a gopher snake. It's a guide and uh, just make it as useful as possible. We're going to be distributing thousands of these things for free because I think everybody that lives here and all around the perimeter of the city 
anybody that's moving here, this is something that they should have. This is one page of a spread that's gonna show a lot of similar snakes. This is showing an example of two snakes that are very often confused for one another and the basis of information, including how big they tend to get versus how big they can be in the state and a little QR code up here too. Every snake is gonna have one. So if somebody does want to deep dive and know what this guy eats and know everything about it, we'll have tons of content available on the website, just not in these places where, uh, well, people frankly aren't gonna care. They're gonna care if it's harmless, if it bites or not, if it lives in the city or around the edge and how common it is. And Jeff is drawing all these things, uh, all the snakes. He can show you what goes into something like this. Basically what it does is it explains the things that homeowners want to know about the snakes that they see. What am I looking at? Is it venomous? Will it bite me if it picks me? A little picks me up. <laughs> snakes won't pick you up. Does snake fencing keep it out? And um, what should I do? How big does it get? Just kind of general questions that normal people want to know. I could go into verse. Uh, with people about trivial pursuit on uh, snakes and snake behavior, but um, I, we do acknowledge that not everybody wants to know about that or really cares about that. They just kind of want to know, like, is this a bad thing? if this snake is in my yard. Well, uh, I don't have any water in my car, which is probably a bad idea living in Phoenix at this point when it's starting to get hot outside. I think I'm going to go grab some water for it since it's had a stressful couple hours before I let it go. Hold me now. I'm six feet from the edge and I'm thinking. How many other people are out in a Circle K parking lot with a rattlesnake strapped into a kid's car seat? Probably no one. Ooh, I know it's cold. I know it's cold. I know it's cold. It's cold. I know. I know. I know it's cold. I should probably drink some of that water too. Starting to get kind of toasty out here. Oh man, I hate the sand. Okay, let's check on this guy. Oh yeah, all soaking in. Good for you, that's good. This color's really pop too <clears throat> when it's all wet. Go. I know, I know, I don't want to grab you by your wound here. Okay, out in the deep part of that bush. There you go. There's a big deep pack rat nest, and since the sun's out, it's not going to want to wander, so it's going to find that deep cover in there, figure it out. So, alrighty. There's some water for the desert. All right, well, it is starting to get kind of hot outside. <laughs> it's about that time when you do a removal and you go, oh, okay, well, no more just uh, going out. I should have water with me and a hat and everything. And that goes for everybody hiking out here in Arizona too. Don't think that you can just go out and hike all these trails and stuff willy-nilly with one water bottle and the most skin exposure possible. Wear hats, long sleeve shirts, all that stuff. Keep cool because it's gonna start getting toasty pretty quick here. By now, I'm sure you guys as viewers have probably noticed that there's a little bit of a heavy bias in the calls that we do and the frequency of calls around Cave Creek and Scottsdale. Because of the heavy amount of interspersed lowland flat Sonoran desert here amongst various neighborhoods, projects that are being built up and gets plowed for houses over time and over the span of 50 years when we're quadrupling the population here. Um, these snakes get funneled into corridors, into tiny washes and things of that variety. That it, the interspersal of, of natural desert into the neighborhoods is why we see these calls. 
This isn't a job that always has a perfect answer or a correct formula to it. A lot of the times we just do the best we can with the knowledge that we have on our end, uh, which happens to be pretty ecologically based and that goes a long way. Sometimes it's a lot of bouncing around, hitting dead ends, and then finally finding something like this where it'll suffice. It's not perfectly located. You know, I would have preferred to have the snake closer to its initial home range, but at the same time, this is an area where it's not gonna have to bounce around and worry about house after house after house. And it can reintegrate and sort itself out from there, and it has plenty of room that doesn't look like it's gonna be developed in the ongoing future here. That is gonna be more important to its overall survival. It's a big snake that again has probably seen some things and been around the block for quite a while. It's safe out there, I promise. That works too. As that tail slips into the hole, it sounds like I might have another destination to go to. Hey everyone, headed to a corn Scottsdale. A lady has a rattlesnake. She sent me a picture. It's a western diamondback in a uh, pool overflow area. So it's, it's kind of trapped in the water. So I'm headed that way now. Poor thing. Looks like it's just floating. Thankfully, uh, that'll keep it nice and cool since it does look like it's in the sun. But uh, headed that way now. I'm not too far away. I'm like five minutes. So let's go get this snake. Hello. How you doing? Good. Thank you. You're welcome. So he's closer to this end. Okay. It's down over there. Yeah, he's just down there. How'd you even see him? You clean the pool? I was, uh, yeah, they cleaned. I was out just like looking for golf balls. And all of a sudden I came oh. back and went, Whoa! Oh, wow. Okay. Is he over at He's right down there. Yeah. I might just hop across real quick. It's decent size, yeah. Oh, poor thing. Wonder how long. Just, like kind of splooshed over, probably. I don't know. Hopefully he's okay. But he's alive. He's yes, yeah, so he was looking at me, so I'm like, he's gotta be okay. There we go. There we go. All right, buddy, I'll save ya. Were you over here yesterday? Oh, there he goes. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, was, I think it was out if not two days ago. So okay. I, don't, I think it was just today. Just today. Buddy, I gotta fish you out of here. Oh, he's decent size. He's pretty I big. Know, he looks thick. I can't believe it's he's very that thick. Calm. I mean, he pooped up a little to float, so he's oh, that, that, made, really? that oh, made him a little, oh, okay. a little thicker. But he is a big snake. I'll bring him over there, and you can see him better. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Now I guess you got to watch for rattlesnakes yes, in there. <laughs> I, know, I don't think I was searching for balls. Much, right? No. <laughs> yeah, these lantanas might. They like to hide under those sometimes. The purple flowers? Yeah, the lantanas. Thankfully, yours are pretty. Th Thin, okay. Like, like sometimes they grow really high and it makes oh, a nice shady area. Okay. Like under this probably gets pretty hot in the hot part of the year, but yeah. Um, do you have a dog or anything? No. Okay. No. Easy for you to look around then, especially on the white floor here. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Thanks for calling. I'm glad that I made it before you had to leave here. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Here. Hi. All right, we're fine. So, let's turn this pack out next to Can you head there? Here you go, little bud. Yeah, right behind you. There you go. There you go. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna save ya. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're safe. Are you yawning? All right, see you, bud. All right, well, that was a pretty fast call, but uh, really happy she called because that snake could not get out of there. The poor thing was trapped in that water catchment from her pool. Uh, I don't know how long it was in there, but it was fine, so it was pretty defensive. <laughs> but understandably, it was fighting for its life for who knows how long, but it was okay. Time to head back home. It's been a really busy day, but thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.